Hi, this is uh, Fabian at Noisette, and uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, something we just released, which is called Noisette Nutshell, and it's a, uh, a visual screen designer and uh, C-sharp code generator for the touch display module that we released uh, a little while ago. So, if you go to the product page, um, you will see that uh, we have a little blurb talking about, um, well, Nutshell, and uh, if you click on it, it will uh, start the editor. You can also go to it directly through noisette.com nutshell. The whole point of uh, nutshell is to let you visually create your displays. So um, you have a palette of tools here that will let you um, do just that. So let's begin and uh, we're gonna see exactly how it works. So the first control we'll be using is to uh, the, the control letting you fill the screen and uh, as you can see you can just uh, you have a color picker uh, for uh, any color attribute that you can just uh, um, play with and, and, and define what color you would like for the background for example or if it's text well you can actually pick the color for the text that you want so it, it's really a straightforward way of, of visually defining things um, without having to guess as to what's going to happen. So in this particular case, I'm going to call this uh, RGB uh, pixel art, and um, I'm going go I'm going to reproduce a little demo that um, I um, I built for a Seattle Maker Fair using this. As you can see, um, objects dropped in um, in nutshell uh, appear in in various uh, uh, sections of the user interface. So you've got here a rendering of the display the way it will show up on the hardware. You've got over here a magnifying glass uh, with the current coordinates of your um, cursor on the screen. And whenever you hover over uh, the uh, rendering, it will actually magnify the, uh, the view of uh, the pixels and let you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, you can also emulate the hardware uh, the exact way um, it will um, show up on the display. So this is because there's a difference between JavaScript canvas uh, uh, rendering and the actual hardware rendering. Um, this is actually evidenced with a circle, for example, where you can see uh, when you emulate the hardware, there is no dithering on the pixels. But if you uncheck that box, you will see all of a sudden that it's much smoother. So because uh, the, 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 the hardware on the hardware itself, we don't do this kind of dithering. It takes uh, quite a bit of uh, time to do this. Um, and it's faster not to do it. So therefore, we, we just don't do that. So keep, it, keep that in mind uh, when you build a display you may want at some point to double check that things are exactly the way you want them to appear on the display and checking that box will let you do that. So when you drop a control, when you drop a, a form on um, uh, in Nutshell, you also get the code right here uh, defined for you. So for instance, uh, you'll see here uh, this corresponds to the radius of um, the circle and you can either uh, change it right here in this field or in this particular case you can just uh, control it this way uh, with a slider and uh, easily see what you're doing so i'm going to go back to the javascript rendering and um, i'm going to now pick the color for that particular circle um, let's see let's pick something a little more visible on this background uh, well, this background actually stinks. I'm going to go with something a lot lighter and go back to a color that's more visible for a circle, uh, perhaps. There you go. So you get the idea. Um, at any point in, in time, you can actually remove an element of your drawing. And uh, in this case, I don't need the circle, so I'm just going to take it out. And uh, I'm going to go back here and change the color of my uh, title. And I'm going to well, go in the reds, perhaps, um, like this. There you go. OK. So our next step will be to position a button. Um, 
so that we can actually exit this particular um, screen uh, once it's wired up and, and running. Um, I will uh, change the width of the button to position it so that it's uh, mm, somewhat centered. I will change the height of the button to make it um, easy to um, click into. And we'll call it uh, continue. And uh, to make it a little more uh, visible, we'll change that to something a little more bold. Um, you can also change exactly where the position of the text will be in the button. Um, I think that looks okay. And um, some elements have a particular uh, styles that you can change. Uh, these styles are shown here. And in this case, this is going to create a rounded, uh, a button with rounded edges. The next step in our drawing will be uh, involving a powerful feature of Nutshell, which is uh, the loop feature. Um, it actually allows you to repeat a particular um, uh, element of a drawing uh, by in a for loop. So as you can see, you can um, control the beginning of the loop. Um, zero is fine here and we'll go in this particular case because I'm looking at creating um, a grid pattern uh, with lines. I'm going to position it um, actually to go to 170 um, horizontal. And um, I want to have uh, increments of 10 uh, for, for the lines. And uh, we'll keep that particular variable for the counter. Now, now inside of the loop, I'm going to add the line element uh, that I'm looking at uh, repeating. So um, I want to control the uh, horizontal um, position of the line as I'm drawing it. So we're going to uh, start at uh, 80 and we're going to add the value of um, the counter. Uh, and we'll go to position 42 in this particular case. Um, I already know what I want to build because I'm reproducing a, uh, a demo, a demo screen that I used during the Seattle um, Mini Maker Fair a couple weeks ago. So I can already know where things should be placed and I'm just going to show you um, how to reproduce that. So there you go. I've got um, all of my lines. I've got um, basically 16, um, I mean 17 lines on the screen and that defines um, the um, first part of the grid I'm trying to create. So we're going to create now the vertical portion of that display. Again, we're going to use a second loop and um, exactly the same uh, method as before. We're going to embed a line in it, except that this time the parameters will be, um, well, slightly different. Um, so we'll create the vertical, uh, the verticals here. Um, top to bottom. So let's see, uh, I want to go from uh, 110 still in uh, steps of 10. So that will give me a, a square grid. Uh, and I want to go from, uh, let's see, 80 up to 42 plus I, my counter, and uh, all the way from, uh, to, from 240 to 42 plus I, and that gives me the complete pattern. So our next step is going to uh, be to get out of the loop, literally, and to do the, otherwise our next element will be within the, the last loop we created. So we're going to click at the top of the screen on fill screen, and we're going to add this time uh, a filled rectangle um, that will position uh, to be on the right hand side of our grid. So uh, let's see, I'm going to, well, there, there's a particular, you could use the handles of the control to roughly position it and uh, then um, adjust, oh, I mean the text again, sorry. And then um, let's see, I'm going to go 260 
and I'm going to go 42 for this in the y-axis and 290 to make it a little shorter and uh, 72 to complete the square and since I want red I'm gonna pick a nice deep red there you go okay next we'll add the red and uh, I mean uh, the green and the blue um, so same thing I'm gonna uh, put a, a rectangle uh, roughly position the same and there you go and then we'll just uh, tweak it to make it uh, absolutely uh, position perfectly so in this particular case we want 260 uh, 77 to align it uh, where we want uh, in terms of the height we're going to go 290 and it will be 107 to make a perfect uh, square and uh, since we want green uh, we're going to pick green something pretty bright as well there you go Next, we want blue. Let's do the same thing. Position it roughly. There you go. There you go. And uh, we'll finish by uh, editing the coordinates. So we want uh, 260 again. We want uh, something a little smaller. Uh, 290 as usual. And we'll go to 142 to match the bottom of the grid and we said we wanted blue so let's pick a something blue a little darker perhaps perfect there you go and the last item will be a button to um, erase the drawing so I'm gonna pick a button and um, I'm gonna position it not too close to the grid so that people don't reset their drawing um, inadvertently and uh, we'll call it uh, reset. Oops, reset. There you go. And um, that completes pretty much our drawing. So I'm gonna save it um, as um, RGB um, pixel art, and that's it. And uh, now the next step will be to uh, bring up um, the code into Visual Studio so that we can compile it and test it on the display. Okay, so now that we have the complete um, display ready, we are ready to send it to our hardware um, and, and test what it looks like. So um, the content of the code is obviously right here. You could do uh, select all and uh, copy uh, to put it on the clipboard or you can actually use this convenient button called the copy c -sharp code um, and which does the same exact thing without uh, having to highlight everything. So um, I'm going to bring up Visual Studio. Um, I created an empty project and um, I added the two um, using statements that reference the namespaces um, uh, used for driving the touch display. So that's the Noisette Go imaging and Noisette Go fonts um, uh, namespaces. Um, in the references, I also added the Noisette Go core and Noisette Go um, reference for the display driver itself. Obviously, the fonts are required for uh, all the font references that we've had so far and for driving the display you need the uh, imaging um, uh, namespace which contains the reference to the virtual canvas. So I'm going to go to the main function and simply paste the code that uh, was generated by Nutshell. So something to be mindful about is the fact that Nutshell by default allocates socket 5 uh, for the connection to the touch display. So this may not correspond to your setup. Be sure to change that value to correspond to where your um, display is actually connected on the Netduino Go. Otherwise, obviously, nothing is going to uh, work properly and the display will not be updated. So in this particular case, I'm indeed on socket five and I'll just um, let it be that way. 
So we're going to um, compile the code and deploy it. So I have my Netduino Go connected here with a touch display and I'm going to just do deploy, deploy succeeded. And uh, let's go take a look at uh, what our display looks like. So here we are. I have my uh, little setup here. Um, it's made with uh, Netduino Go, obviously. Um, the touch display is connected to socket 5. Uh, and it's mounted on one of our stackable plates um, so that uh, the display and the Netduino Go are uh, together in, as part of the same uh, convenient block. So um, I'm going to connect um, the Netduino Go to USB, which will power it, and uh, we'll see what our screen looks like. There you go. So pretty much this is exactly what uh, was shown in nutshell in the um, display window. And now we can um, um, add to our code uh, now that the, the display is designed and hook up the buttons and, and actually implement uh, what RGB pixel art um, should be doing um, with the display. Thank you for watching. Bye.